Earlier this summer, Nancy and I visited upstate New York. It's unbelievably beautiful, and thus not surprising, that a great group of American artists, the Hudson River School, got their start up there. One day, we decided to visit a magnificent estate near Hudson, New York. It's called Olana, and it sits high on a hill overlooking the river, two and a half hours north of New York City. Olana was the home of Frederick and Isabel Church. In 1826, Frederick Edwin Church was born into a wealthy family in Hartford, Connecticut. In time, he would become one of the greatest landscape painters in American history. His parents arranged for him to study art with Thomas Cole, one of the great artists of his day, who lived across the river in Catskill, New York. Cole had been born in England and specialized in allegorical landscapes. He's considered the father of the Hudson River School. He initiated church in the process of painting landscapes directly on location. We had a terrific tour guide at Alana. She told us that Frederick's parents were very supportive and gave him money and time to develop as an artist. Kind parents making a very wise investment. Young Frederick moved to New York City in 1847 and began an incessant pattern of artistic traveling. Not only did he capture the wild beauty of an untamed American wilderness, he also brought back the four corners of the earth to be seen by an eager public. In 1859, he sold his painting called Heart of the Andes to the Metropolitan Museum of Art for a record-setting $10,000, the highest price that had ever been paid for the work of a living American artist. He was one of the most successful artists of his day. Not only was there a great market for his work, he held public viewings of his huge works and charged people to see them. In 1861, the churches moved into a small house on that hill, which they called Cozy Cottage, and Frederick began improving the grounds, establishing a farm, and planting lots of trees. The couple began having kids, and Frederick probably paid a substitute to avoid service in the Civil War. But he did care greatly about the Union cause, and created a small patriotic painting that was made into a poster. Some of his close friends died in the war, and this painting is evocative of his grief. A 
Around the time that the war ended, two of their children died of diphtheria. The grief-stricken couple fled to Jamaica, where Frederick created this emotional landscape. In 1866, they had another son and bought more land on their hill. In 1867, they went to Europe and the Mideast for a year and a half. Frederick was very taken by what he saw in Persia. After returning, they had more kids, and Frederick worked with a friend and architect named Calvert Vox to build a new house destined to be called a Persian-sounding name, Olana. The family moved into it in 1872. Our tour guide explained that Olana is like one of Frederick's paintings. He wants to control the way a visitor will see it, and he uses stands of trees to hide and open spaces to reveal certain views of the house. In an 1884 letter, Church wrote of his work on the grounds at Olana. I can make more and better landscapes in this way than by tampering with canvas and paint in the studio. Olana is surely a masterpiece of both architecture and landscape design. But as a huge fan of his studio tamperings, I am glad Frederick Church continued painting. The church family continued to travel a lot, but Olana eventually became the center of their lives, and luminaries like Mark Twain came to do readings. In later life, both Frederick and Isabel suffered from health problems. Frederick's arthritis made painting difficult, but he kept at it and as an old man made some brilliant sketches of his beloved Alana. Isabel died in 1899, Frederick a year later. Olana stayed in the family until the mid-1960s, but then its fate took a dire turn. In September of 1965, Life magazine ran a story, Must This Mansion Be Destroyed? This galvanized local and national attention. By June 1966, the New York State Legislature under Governor Nelson Rockefeller, had passed a bill authorizing the purchase of Olana. Olana opened as a New York State historical site in June 1967. Thanks to the Olana Partnership for preserving this masterpiece of architecture and home to one of our country's greatest creative spirits.